I'm Donna Gress, and our topic is Melanoma AJCC 8th Edition Staging. First, we're going to talk about the T, N, and M categories. The regional lymph nodes, these are defined by drainage areas of the primary tumor. This can be confined to one nodal basin or two contiguous nodal basins, and midline tumors may drain in two different directions. The clinical T category. A diagnostic biopsy is needed to establish the diagnosis and the T category. In determining the thickness for the T category, this is measured by the pathologist to the nearest tenth of a millimeter, not the nearest one hundredth of a millimeter due to impracticality and imprecision. And this was the pathologist's decision a few years ago that they needed to only measure to the tenth. You cannot use Clark level to infer thickness. And the rationale for this is skin thickness varies on different parts of the anatomy. The skin thickness varies by person and extension into other structures is not the same as thickness. For example, think about your wrist skin compared to your heel skin thickness. Very different. Therefore, skin thickness is critical. And that is why you cannot use Clark's to try to decide what the thickness is. Ulceration is not seen by the managing physicians or patients. There must be a clear statement on ulceration. You cannot presume there is no ulceration if it's not stated. This would, again, never be on a physical exam because it cannot be seen. This is determined by histopathological exam only. Now, direct extension is not a factor in the T category. Staging does not use extension into cartilage, skeletal muscle, bone, or other subcutaneous tissue. Pathological T category. Do not use information from the treatment in order to go back and change the clinical T. It is what was known at that point in time. Do not go back and change it. The definition, as we've stated before, of melanoma ulceration is the absence of completely intact epidermis above the melanoma. This cannot be seen. This is based only on histopathological exam. PT assignment uses all of the following. You use the clinical T information, the operative findings, and the path report of the resected primary tumor specimen. The main information for PT may actually come from the clinical staging. Most, if not all, of the tumor may be removed in that diagnostic biopsy. CT may be most of the information for the PT assignment. Clinical N and pathological N categories. For the node assessment, this is based on exam and imaging, usually CT, PET CT, ultrasound, abnormally large, hypermetabolic, or if they have characteristic abnormalities. This helps them determine the node assessment. It can then be proven by fine needle aspiration biopsy, a needle core biopsy, or sentinel node biopsy. Clinically occult, N1 to N3 with an A is not identified on imaging or exam. It's identified only microscopically on a biopsy or a resection. Clinically detected, which is N1 to N3 with the B, is identified on imaging or exam. Now, as a reminder, isolated tumor cells are considered 
positive notes. This is only for melanoma and Merkel cell. Those are the only ones with this exception. All other disease sites consider them negative notes, but this has been proven on data that these do act and have the outcome of positive notes. Clinical N and pathological N categories. We need to remember that in transit, satellite and microsatellite METs are all part of the N category. These are designated as N1C, N2C, or N3C, and it's with or without nodal involvement as per the definitions in the AJCC chapter. Now, the N category non-nodal criteria is defined as follows. A microsatellite is microscopic METs found adjacent or deep to the primary. A satellite would be grossly visible cutaneous or subcutaneous METs less than or equal to two centimeters of the primary. In transit would be clinically evident dermal or subcutaneous METs greater than two centimeters from the primary between the primary and the first echelon of regional nodes. So you can see it goes from around the primary to near the primary to further away from the primary. Clinical M and pathological M categories. The M category clarification. If microscopic evidence PM is used, if there's no microscopic evidence of any metastatic site, CM is used. So remember, it's method of assessment. Now, if you have multiple metastatic sites, only one site must have microscopic evidence in order to assign the PM. All sites do not need that microscopic evidence to use the PM. Now, the LDH for M1 subcategory of either zero or one, this is part of the M category, not a suffix. And for example, you would see it written as M1A parentheses one or M1C parentheses zero. Now it must be distant skin and distant soft tissue for M1A. I think people get confused when they see skin and soft tissue and don't realize that we're talking about distant skin and distant soft tissue. Let's take a look at stage classification, the diagnostic workup and treatment. The criteria for the clinical classification, also called pretreatment classification. Patients are undergoing a diagnostic workup, which can include physical exam of the primary site, assessment of risk factors, physical exam of potential regional nodes, adequate biopsy to assess the T category, which could be a shave biopsy, incisional biopsy, or an excisional biopsy, imaging in higher T categories or involved nodes. And if distant METs are suspected, you'll need more imaging and LDH. Now there's also a document under the clinical clarification section on the AJCC website, AJCC 8th edition melanoma staging. It's very similar to the rules written up for just AJCC 8th edition staging rules, but we've made this one melanoma specific in order to help uh, registrars and everyone remember the rules. Now, there are rare incidental findings, resections for other lesions that do not meet a surgical treatment criteria. Most incidental findings would be part of that diagnostic workup. Now, diagnostic versus treatment. So diagnostic procedures would be an excisional biopsy of a lesion. And I'm hoping the illustration and the analogy I've given here of the eye will be helpful to you. So think of the pupil as the melanoma, the iris, the colored part, as the margin around the melanoma, 
And then the eyelids are what you're going to be using for your excision in order to close the wound. So for your diagnostic procedures, you would have an excisional biopsy of the lesion, the pupil, to assess the thickness. So you'd either be taking out the pupil or less. Smaller biopsies may be needed for certain sites, particularly if they're close to um, some structures that they don't want to damage, and do not change the staging based on subsequent information. What you found as part of the diagnosis is what you found, irregardless of additional or different information identified later. Now, for surgical treatment of the primary site, your resection should have a half to a two centimeter margin, depending on what is appropriate based on the, um, the thickness. And that would be a margin from the tumor on all sides. So what the physician does is they would actually draw a circle represented here by the iris, the colored part, drawn around the lesion, the pupil, to establish the margin boundaries. And then obviously, if you cut out a circle, you can't close that type of a wound. So now they need to draw a football shape or an oval where the eyelids are around that circle in order to close the wound. This must be the description of the procedure in order to be called a wide local excision and be eligible for pathological staging. Now, if a nodal dissection is not done, this is still considered treatment. Treatment satisfying stage classification. For pathological staging, you must have that wide excision or re-excision of the tumor. It must include the appropriate margins around the tumor, and it must have that football-shaped excision to close the wound. That is a wide excision. And sometimes they call it a re-excision because you've removed a lot of the tumor in the first diagnostic um, procedures. But a re-excision doesn't mean you still don't have to have those same appropriate margins and the football shape in order to close it. So don't be confused. They, both of those terms must have those descriptions in order to be considered for pathological staging. Now, nodal sampling or dissection, you could do sentinel nodes, a node dissection. Neither of these is required to qualify for staging, and the nodal sampling or dissection is definitely not required for stage 0 or 1A, and that exception is noted in the chapter. LDH is needed for the M1 subcategory of either 0 for not elevated or 1 for elevated. And again, there's the critical clarifications document on the AJCC website for melanoma staging. Post-neoadjuvant therapy staging. There are clinical trials with chemotherapy and immunotherapy being used, and immunotherapy is definitely gaining in popularity for neoadjuvant therapy. Information and questions on AJCC staging. Timing is Everything is a graphic that's available for free download from the AJCC website. The arrows define the time frame, and the squares define the criteria. And it just helps give you a picture and an image to think about the different stage classifications and how they relate to each other. The AJCC website can be reached at cancerstaging.org. It includes an overview version nine, also the cancer staging systems, such as the eighth edition that is still being used until they're being each individually replaced by version nine. And it includes an opportunity to download a free copy of the AJCC eighth edition chapter one, principles of cancer staging. There's a section for cancer staging education and also frequently asked questions and resources. Please look at the cancer form for additional information. 
um, be sure and search for your question first before you post a new question. It's likely that your question has already been asked and answered. That's why we say it provides information from everyone for everyone because everyone can learn from the Q&A that's being posted. Also, it allows us to track and see where education might be needed in the future. This has been developed through generous support from the American Cancer Society, and we thank them for this. I'm Donna Gress, and I would like to thank you for your attendance.